We're in a big echoey warehouse type building in Abingdon, Oxfordshire. And uh, I'm Paul's son, Joseph. I don't often come this side of the camera, but we thought it was time to have a quick chat with you guys about where we're at, about why we're moving, and about a little bit of the plans of what's coming up, because we've been working on it for a really long time and we're really excited about it. Um, but we've only been able to share bits and bobs with you along the way, because we didn't want to give minute by minute updates and then have you sharing in the frustrating process of waiting for things to come into place. But we feel like that waits sort of in at an end, or at least it's a more interesting wait for a while now. And so we're gonna start sharing uh, some updates and share with you some of the plans we've got for this space that we're sat in right now, this very echoey building, and, uh, and show you uh, a little bit of our space here about how we got up to this point and where we're going from here. A while back, uh, we did a survey, didn't we? Asking people what sort of space they work in. Yeah. Um, and well, we've, we, found, we found people work in a whole range of spaces, but the average is a single car garage. It kind of confirmed really what we already yeah. knew, but we wanted to make sure we were right. Yeah. We were, yeah, definitely. Um, and so what we thought was the majority of the people who are following along are, uh, are building furniture for their own home in a single car garage. And we thought that actually condensing down, because we, we talked about this, uh, that you, uh, you actually work in a fairly small footprint and with a relatively small number of tools. Yeah. But uh, because you've had bigger spaces and more tools behind you, it's, it's not always sent the focus message that we wanted. No. Um, and so what we're actually doing here is condensing down. Well, let's see what. I always had at home, really. It's really no different. I have a garage at home, and, and uh, everywhere I've lived, pretty much, I've had a workspace that has, you know, when I put everything into even a big space, I still end up with this measured pace, a bit like a kitchen, really. You work a certain area in a kitchen, and, um, uh, you, you know, the sink, the fridge, the microwave, the dining table, whatever you have in there, are all a certain distance from a, from the cook, and yeah. uh, and that's really no different. So this is just my cooking space. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we, we actually looked at how we could uh, how we could work in a space like that and actually film productively in a space that was the sort of footprint of a single car garage. And when we thought about actually filming in a real garage, because we wanted it to be as authentic as possible, but actually when we looked at that, that didn't come across as authentic because the camera has to be so close up to you in the garage that you don't actually see the space you're working in. Yeah. So we figured the, the camera would have to go a whole chunk back outside the wall of the garage. Yeah. So then we talked about doing a double garage or a triple garage, but pretend like it's a single garage. Um, and then we talked about needing more head height for, for lights and for yeah. the cameras to operate in. Uh, and that's when we actually talked about actually buying a much bigger building, like the warehouse we're sat in right now, <laughs> yeah. and creating a set that is a garage to try and recreate the authenticity of a garage, um, but with the realization that to film authentically as a garage, you've got to have a lot more space. Yeah. Yeah, and we have staff too that yeah. have to be accommodated because the behind the scenes guys are flat out working at desks and so on. So it encompasses everything we really want to put in here. But this is the hub. This is where we create the videos and this is what we wanted. We wanted a garage. My bench at home goes against a wall. So if you picture this is a window on that side of it, you're seeing into my typical garage space yeah. and everything that we do from here on will be very authentic in that way because yeah. it's where I really work. And so the upcoming videos um, starting uh, sometime this year, Paul is going to be making furniture for his home in what will look like his home garage. Yeah. Uh, we, we wanted to be upfront right from the beginning that it isn't his home garage because it wouldn't be practical to film in so small an amount of space. But we're trying to recreate the space that Paul would be making in because we feel like that'll be the most authentic for those of you following along to see Paul building furniture in a space similar to what a bunch of you have said you work in and then building things for your own home. Um, and we've been working on this for a couple of years, but this is our first tangible step is being here in this building, which we're gonna convert into a studio that will look like a home garage. Yeah. Uh, and that's where we're gonna be building that furniture. Yeah, it's exciting really, because, because it makes it so real in some ways that this is, we wanted this to 
embrace every woodworker from every quarter, no matter who they were, where they were in the world. And this is what we feel is big, is you know the, our best contribution to it, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually uh, put in the offer on this building and had it accepted uh, May 2016. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long process actually, um, and we've only just got the keys. Uh, here in February 2018. Um, so it's been a long process, but we haven't been giving minute by minute updates throughout that time because it's actually been a frustratingly slow process throughout much of that time. Um, and we've had lots of waiting. Um, so uh, I thought it'd be helpful to run everybody through where we've been since, yeah. um, starting probably because we've been at Silver and we've just done a video um, on saying goodbye to everybody out at Silver, but actually just running through the quick timeline of where we've, uh, where we've been over the last few months thought it'd be helpful because back in uh, because we we set up the garage set to uh, to test out that space and filmed the workbench in what was a mock-up of what we're now planning uh, to have here we set that up it was, we didn't do it with real bricks we did it with sort of wallpaper Four brick walls, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a stud wall and made made a brick effect yeah. studio um, but in a big open space where lots of other people were working yeah. um, so we had early starts uh, and lots of noise coming in from the outside. And feed the clamps from the underside. Of this type of wood. I'm going to run a couple of lines this time. Um, so we set that up and successfully filmed the workbench. And I'm, I'm treating it quite lightly, but it was very It was very stressful, yeah, very um, stressful, you frustrating. You just got the words right. And yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I've got, how many tools do you need? I don't quite know. Sorry, can we stop? And I'm ready for the next stage, which is going to be planing up the age, apron. I've re... Phew. Many of you will have seen the workbench videos that we put together, which was a great success in, in that sort of uh, mock-up set that we had. And uh, we, we then had to tear that down because that was never a permanent thing. Um, and we did that back in November, uh, and we, we shot some footage as we went along with that so that people could see that part of our journey. For me, that was the hard part because I kind of got used to that set too. It did feel like a, more like home. And, but the reason was, I think mostly was, it, it, you know, I've always been an avid collector of tools and I've always had a mass of tools and I still have a mass of tools, mm. but it projected the wrong image for me. I, it really wasn't inclusive and it might well, Because it made it look like people had to have that many tools yeah, to do what you were yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas we use 30 or 40 tools and, and you can just about make anything with it. And that's the, the direction we're going in all the time is to make this inclusive to everybody. We don't want an exclusive woodworking club. We want an inclusive woodworking group. Club. And so that part of that process was packing up the boxes and moving things into storage while we waited for the keys effectively. Yeah.
So after we condensed everything down, um, we actually set things back up in your space out at Silver uh, with a much more stripped down look, a lot uh, with, with just a few tools. Mm. And we actually filmed very successfully. We weren't going to let it hold us back. We did some great videos mm. with that stripped back, um, more minimalist set. It actually gave me more room to yeah. assemble stuff. And yeah. I thought that was better too. Yeah. So there was a long time of waiting. We made good use of it but we finally got the keys in February. This is a special day, this is, the, this is Friday, and we are dismantling everything that we've had together at um, our, what turned out to be a temporary workshop, studio. We're moving into our new one, so today and tomorrow is the big move, are the big move days, really. We're going to customise the inside and customise our development and, and all the projects we've got to do over the, the coming years to keep training and keep teaching and keep passing on all the information and the knowledge and the research we do and everything else. So it all comes from that one, one place. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a marvellous thing. This is like a big blank canvas, isn't it? That's what, just amazing, really. Like a huge cave. Uh -huh. Just over there, that is where I live, that my house is just on the other side of the trees, just on the other side of the leisure centre, so I can walk. Oh. So nice. I'm too old for this moving business. It's nice, isn't it? I feel pretty small now because everything's gone, all my comfort zone is gone and all my, uh, everything that I drew my identity from is gone and uh, it's really a good feeling, it's very humbling to feel like we're moving to a new level and uh, it's very exciting, I feel even though we're in the midst of, move, of the move, I feel very excited about where we're going to. I'm just, you know, these are all memories. You pack your memories up in the things you make, or I do. Mary's moving in here. She's bringing her chairs and her teaching into here. It's going to be great. So it's time to move on. <laughs> We've got the guys that are going to unload us and put us in our new office space, our new workshop and everything. Everything's going to be here in this one spot. It's wonderful. So uh, that the wood rack, I'm going to put down in that corner and all the wood's going to go in that corner. Yeah. yeah.
can't imagine now when I look back on it. You know, you're always in these periods where you feel like things are not progressing and then all of a sudden you're in the space and that, you know, now I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I must admit, I am very excited about this because it prefaces everything that we want to do. Yep. You know, building furniture, making things together with thousands and thousands of people. And this is really the only way we can do it efficiently because we do have to make everything effective. And this will, this will help us to speed up the process without speeding up the films every time. So it's going to be great. I think it'd be easier on everybody. Uh, so now we've moved into the new building, Paul's got the temporary set you had before basically set back up the same way you had it before. But there's going to be roof put in here, well, a, a floor put above us here, like you said. There's going to be brickwork done behind us. There's going to be audio blocking panels put on either side of us, lighting rails put above, um, places to put monitors and cameras and equipment and so on. Uh, so it's going to be great, and we're going to share uh, each step of the way with you as we go. Yeah, great. It's wonderful, really. Because it's going to be fun. Thinking, yeah, we contacted the RAF, the Ministry of Defence, and they wouldn't shut down their helicopters going over our building. No, that's so why we had to move. <laughs> we had to do this. Yeah. <laughs>